What's up guys, my name is Seknobu here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a pretty interesting video for you and that is how to host your own Feed the Beast Minecraft server. With the giant resurgence in Minecraft's popularity, a lot of people are jumping back into Minecraft, especially modded Minecraft. And if you know anything about the history of modded Minecraft, you'll usually use Feed the Beast as a mod pack source. And if you do not know by now, that has been bought by Curse, which was bought by Twitch. So you're able to download the Minecraft mod packs from the Twitch launcher, as well as the mod pack server files. So obviously we'll head across to the Twitch launcher to begin. Once you get to the Twitch launcher, head to the Mods tab, Minecraft, and then head across to Browse Mod Packs, even if you have the mod pack currently installed. I'll be using a Feed the Beast Direwolf 20, as I already have that installed. So, there's no need to search for it, as it's already here. We'll click on it, and then you'll notice that there is a Download Server Pack button. We'll go ahead and click that now. It will start a download, and we'll simply left click on the file that is downloading to automatically open it once it's complete. If you don't have the mod pack already installed, make sure to download it from here. Once the download is complete, you'll end up with a zip file like this, and these are the contents of it. Obviously I'm using 7-zip, so this may look different for you whether you're using the default Windows Zip Explorer, or something like WinRAR, but either way, the process is the same. Make a folder somewhere that you'd like the server files to be. I'll do it on the desktop and I'll call it Dire Wolf Server. Drag and drop all the files that you downloaded into here, out of the zip, and you can close the zip once the copying is complete. Now usually it looks something similar to this with a install.bat and a something along the lines of start server.bat. So what you'll need to do is simply double click on ftb install.bat if you're using Dire Wolf 20, Otherwise, find something similar, and if there is no install.bat, then you'll probably find to continue. While that's downloading, let's go ahead and open up settings.bat, or something similar to that, with something like Notepad++. If you don't already have Notepad++, you can go ahead and download it from the link in the description down below. If you were to open it up without something like Notepad++, you'll usually see a crunched up mess like this that's difficult to understand. Right click on it and edit with Notepad++. Inside of here is where we have settings that we aren't supposed to change, highlighted by something saying do not touch, and settings that we can change, highlighted by something saying can be changed by user, or something along those lines. Now the only thing you really need to look for in here is maximum RAM, RAM limit, or something along those lines, followed by a number M, or something like that. What you'd usually do is you change this to the amount of RAM that you want to give the server itself and not just your Minecraft game. So I have 64 gigabytes of RAM inside of my computer currently, so I can give this a hell of a lot more than just 2 gigs of RAM. Instead of getting into difficult powers of 2, we can simply type in the amount of RAM that we want to give it, followed by a capital G. So I have 64 gigs of RAM, I'll give the server up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, so I'll enter 16 G. Save the file and close the editor. If you don't have an explicit set RAM here somewhere, then have a look inside of the launch file itself that has something along the lines of hyphen XMX or hyphen XMS and change the number next to it to the amount of RAM you want to give it. Some mod packs don't have this separate server settings file. Then we can go ahead and run server start.bat. Now you'll see that it is launching up currently and generating a bunch of new files. Then you'll see the ULA.txt pop up and an error message in console saying you need to agree to the ULA in order to run the server. So this was added back in roughly 2014. All you need to do is head across to here, go through the ULA and if you agree with everything that's there, change it from false to true. Close out of that after saving it and run server start.bat once again. This time it will take a lot longer to load, as it will load most of the mods initially, and then get to generating a bunch more stuff, and we just want to wait for a file called server.properties to pop up, and this to finish. So let's quickly wait for this launch to finish. Once it's finished, you'll see that everything in the console stops moving. From here you can simply close it without typing anything into it, and head across to the newly created server.properties file. Open it up with something like Notepad++ once again, and this is where you can edit everything from the MOTD to the server name, etc, etc. But what we really need to focus on here is the server port. 
Usually it is 25565 by default or whatever they have it set to. Usually you'd leave this to what it is set originally without changing it unless you're running more than one Minecraft server on the same network. So as you may or may not know from hosting servers in the past, this is very important as it has to do with port forwarding, something that a lot of people see as very difficult until they do it the first few times and then it's very easy from then. In the past, there were tools like LogMe and Hamachi, which allowed you to join a VPN with your friends and play that way without the need of port forwarding. So if you don't have administrator access to your router, then you may need to go with a solution like that. Otherwise, you should port forward and do it like that. So what you'll need to do is allow this port through your local Windows firewall and then port forwarded from your local router to your local computer through the network. If you're confused on how to do that, then make sure to hit the card in the top right of the screen right now, because that takes you to a very, very simple explanation that will work for a broad number of routers, should be very easy to understand. Once you've got port forwarding down, you can go ahead and close out of this once again, after changing the rest of the settings that you'd like to change, and then simply run server start.bat once again, and then once it completes this time, your Minecraft server will be up and running. You'll be able to join it locally through your Minecraft, not via your IP address, but by either typing in localhost colon 25565 or whatever the port was, or by connecting to 127.0.0.1 colon 25565. If you'd like your friends to join, which you probably do if you're hosting a multiplayer server, you'll need to head across to Google and then enter what is my IP, and then use what comes up here followed by colon 25565. Obviously, I'm going to block this out of the video, but if your friends are unable to connect, you've made sure that you've port forwarded and you have it open on your local Windows firewall, then you may want to head across to the first, second or third link down here and see if your IP is showing up differently. I've had some experiences with Google where the IP address that's shown up here in the nice big block is a little bit off for some reason and the links down below usually help with that. So that's it. You now know how to host your own Minecraft server, and if you have any experience in hosting servers before, usually the first command you'd type in is op followed by your Minecraft username to give yourself administrator or operator. Anyways, that's it. Thank you for watching. My name has been Technobo here for Troubleshoots, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.